When I was a kid, I read books from all different types of genres, including science fiction, fantasy, horror, and comedy. But I always stayed far away from the nonfiction genre unless I had to read a nonfiction book to know what the hell my teachers were talking about on the test they used to give us. Because, in all honesty, I used to feel like that genre was only for old people who were interested in learning about other old people who did boring shit in the time before I was born. At the same time, though, I had a huge interest in true crime. Serial killers, mobsters, train robbers, and cult leaders took up the better part of my imagination, and when I would sit down to watch a documentary or a movie, a lot of the times, they were about those subjects. Little did I know that there was a subgenre of nonfiction books which primarily covered all of those criminals and their effects on society and the people around them. So when I got older and discovered my first true crime book, Zodiac, by Robert Graysmith, it opened up a whole new level of excitement for me, and from then on, I was hooked on true crime novels. Yes, I still read fiction like crazy, but true crime has always been one of my absolute favorite genres, even now at the ripe old age of 26. But even though I had read many true crime novels about all different types of criminals, including serial killers, I had never read a book by Anne Rule. I knew of her existence, sure. You can't pass by a true crime section in a bookstore without seeing one of her books. But unfortunately, they all had titles which, when I was younger and a bigger dumbass than I am now, I thought sounded more like lifetime suspense movies than anything I really cared for. So I avoided her books and continued picking up books that I felt more sophisticated than that. Then one day I was watching a documentary about Theodore Robert Bundy, also known as The Lady Killer by diehard true crime fans, and I thought, holy shit, I never read a, a Ted Bundy true crime book. I should pick one up. So I looked up some titles to keep in mind for when I went to the store in order to make it easier on myself. And before I could get too far into my research, I saw one by Ann Rue called The Stranger Beside Me. I think it was the first one that popped up actually on the internet. Now I must admit that I had seen this book before that fateful day, but I never really looked at it enough to recognize the eyes of one of America's most notorious serial killers. So I didn't give it much thought and the shame that came over me when I realized that that's what it was made me feel really stupid and immediately I knew I had to pick this one up, if only to atone for my sins. So as soon as I was able to go to the store, I did, and thank God, because I have to say right off the bat that this is not just a book that made me buy a lot of her other works, like a coke fiend looking for a hit, and become one of Anne Rule's biggest fans, but also because this is one of the greatest books ever written, period. Fuck true crime. This masterpiece is on the same level as Tom Sawyer, Gone with the Wind, The Odyssey, and Goodnight Moon. So get ready for one of the most unbiblical, unholy idolizing of a writer you will ever hear. I hope you enjoy. Now the book covers the birth, life, and execution, spoiler alert, of Theodore Robert Bundy, or as he was called by those who knew him, Ted. Andrew goes into his past, writing about how he was born out of wedlock to a woman who felt so ashamed that she pretended to be a sister, while her submissive mother and horribly abusive father called themselves Ted's biological parents. From there we learn about Ted being a shy child who would occasionally do things which should have been a warning sign for what he would eventually become, like placing knives around his aunt's bed while she slept, the, the blades pointed at her, and taking a friend to a spot where he says a little girl who had disappeared was buried, and not telling any of the adults who were desperately searching for her. After that, we go into his high school and university years, and we get to see how he learned to escape his shyness and become a charismatic law student who was a rising star in the Republican Party, and commits the murders which gave him the level of infamy that he still has all these years later. While all these things are presented in a beautifully written and paced way, the coolest part comes when Anne herself shows up in the book. In 1971, Anne Rule and Ted Bundy met while they were both working at the Seattle Suicide Hotline and saved lives together and eventually became good friends. Little did Rule know that eventually when she moved on to write her first true crime novel, she had written several true crime short stories for true crime magazines prior to publishing this book, of course. It would be her friend Ted who she would be writing about. It sounds like the plot of a Hollywood crime thriller, but it's all true. And Rule even shows her letters and such to prove that her and Bundy were actually friends. I know that there has been some criticism thrown at her about the legitimacy of her claims, but all I'll say about that is that the evidence convinces me enough to believe she was telling the truth. And in all honesty, even if she didn't provide the letters, 
I would just want it to be true. Because at the end of the day, it is an amazing idea to have a true crime writer who is following the case of a serial killer in the town she lives find out that the killer is somebody she knows. Eventually, the novel does go back to following Ted mostly. And Anne is kind of left behind. Not really, she's still in it enough. But either way, the quality of this novel doesn't drop one bit. You still have so many interesting and horrifying facts to uncover as you continue to read, and it's all fascinating. Overall, the structure of this book is amazing. The pace makes it feel like it would have had it been a fictional story. The writing is superb. Andrew's prose is unique and fits the subject matter so well without becoming dull or so sophisticated that you feel like you're reading a textbook. The way she presents these people, not just Ted Bundy, but also the cops and the victims, and also herself and their motivations, their convictions, their tragedies and triumphs, is astonishing. I don't mean to sound like a broken record, but this really does, doesn't feel like a true crime book, but more like a Michael Connelly or John Grisham book. Something along those lines. It's very impressive. I really enjoyed that she also puts her own theories about what was really going on with Ted and also whether or not the victims that we know about are his only victims in this book, but doesn't try to sound like she's smarter than the cops or like a conspiracy theorist and throw anything crazy out there, like maybe Ted Bundy was part of the Hand of Death or some shit. Check future reviews and videos to find out more about that. She really did her homework and tried to be true to herself and not just what people would have wanted her to say or write in this book, and she deserves props for that. Now, warning to anyone looking for extreme violence and gore. This book doesn't have much. Most of the time, anything that involves gore and blood will come in the aftermath of the murder, not during. This is not like any of her Andy Stack novels, so if you're looking for a gross out, you won't find it here. So for those of you I don't recommend this book for, but for anyone who is interested in true crime but has never read any literature in that genre, or for anyone who has read true crime before but has never read this book, I recommend that you pick this book up. This is one of the most important true crime books you can ever read, and believe me, you will not regret it. And yeah, thank you so much for listening to my review. I really appreciate it, and bye-bye.